Hey boy, what's going on? Today I'm going to be working a little bit with binding. Yeah, and I'll explain why in a bit. Hey, what's going on? Hope you guys are doing good. I am doing just great. So I'm back with Green Terror's Neck, and this is the Neck of Terror. Yep, it's kind of getting worse than better right now, which I guess is to be expected because this is a pretty old neck. And uh, yeah, so I have my radius already sanded, did a little bit of a polishing on the fretboard, not much and started to clean out the fret slots and lo and behold well the binding decided it wanted to pop off like fucking popcorn and this stuff is like so brittle it just snaps there's no bend to it whatsoever so ended up removing the remainder that stuck on here and uh, well it's going to be a new new binding that's going to be put on. So Stumac Delivery today has got my zero fret, my new binding, and I picked up a new uh, fret cutter. This one here I've been using as a cutter and a remover. And using it as a cutter it is starting to kind of uh, make burrs. So this one here, I'm going to run this across the grinder and flatten this out really good and only use this as my puller and the one that I'm getting from Stumac is going to be the one for cutting. So the problem with this is is I can't do anything until I put the new binding on. Now when the old binding was on here I ended up doing the radius for the fret wire and I use this unless I am buying already pre-radius fret wire from Stumac. So as you can see these are just straight bars. Now Using this tool for doing any type of uh, bending your fret wire is a little bit difficult because there's no gauge on here to tell you exactly where to set it for what radius that you're trying to make the fret wire to fit your fretboard. So it's kind of like a game, so to say. You turn it a little bit, bring it down, lock it, lock the back in, run the wire through it, check doesn't work out then you do it again rinse and repeat several times until the fret wire does fit the fretboard the way it's supposed to now the way that I do this is I will loosen up the lock on the back of here but leave it a little bit snug because this will kind of like swivel if this is too loose and I don't want that because that's giving me a false reading as far as what I'm trying to adjust it to um, and also if this is loose when you run the wire through there it also changes you get kind of like um let's just say it's not right so what i end up doing is i'll loosen this up turn it to where it's slightly snug start bringing the wheel upwards so turning this wheel right here and i will put my fret wire inside it to where the tang is inside the groove and start bringing it down to where it's just kind of snug on top of the fret wire lock this thing in place and give it a run through and guarantee you that you're not going to be at the radius the first time around uh, so you're going to have to go like I said rinse and repeat so I will back this off but leaving it snug a little bit tight but not locked entirely in place that way I could turn this wheel here and it will move the wheat the winding wheel up and down to where uh, I can run the fret wire through it and get it to where I need it to be and maybe a little bit quicker since you kind of leave this in a lock position to where it's not torqued down locking this wheel to where it still kind of moves you want it really snug but you don't want it locked in place and that keeps it from wiggling and that will actually give you your adjustment to where you can adjust it's just a little tight that's all so running it through several times getting my wire where it needs to be so this is the finished product now how I test the finished wire to the fretboard is you have to imagine that the binding is still on here because that kind of makes a difference with this type of a neck if it doesn't have the binding on it then it doesn't make any difference at all but this makes the neck a little wider with the binding and it's kind of important that when you're doing a binded 
uh, neck that the binding is still on there when you're doing this otherwise you could have a false reading so I take my wire I will put it up against the fretboard like so now imagine that there's binding here so if I see a gap on either side of the tang and where the binding is uh, then I know I'm not correct if I see a gap in the center then I know I'm not correct so I will end up putting it through just turning that wheel on the top of the fret uh, wire bender just slightly downwards until I match perfectly the tang radius and the radius of the fretboard up against each other that gives me that gives me a perfect seat if you want to call it that when I put these frets in they'll be nice and flush all the way up against the fretboard without having any gaps on either side or in the center using the right type of either the hammer or using the right type of the 12 inch radius on my clamp when I push these things in and again I will be gluing these in I always do now the binding on this thing here is is very brittle so as I was cleaning out the fret slots this stuff is like that's it gone that piece shot out in the floor and that's kind of what this was doing when I was putting uh, cleaning out the fret slots is I'll use my fret slot cleaner and that's what this tool is go inside here and then I'll pull out one side and then I when I get to the end as you can see there's some debris inside there still I'll get to the end and I will bend it up like this and that will pull out whatever debris is inside that slot and then I'll use compressed air or something and blow that out or vacuum vacuum the rest of it whatever's loose and that's how I normally clean the slots on a fretboard before I start installing frets well the binding here decided that it wasn't going to hold and it started coming off like crazy so whatever uh, binding didn't come off I had to kind of like work it off of here some spots were tight some spots were just really really loose now the binding on this thing here the problem with this is that part of the finish you can see that part of the finish is on the binding you see the black finish that's on there so when they painted this they kind of masked it uh, a little bit on top of the binding and spray it now probably to fill the gap between the binding and the wood itself um, well if you have a nice straight edge you really shouldn't have to because this stuff is machined you know it's machined it's not hand chisels and stuff so if you have a nice straight edge then you shouldn't have to worry about filling that gap too much but I can also see over here they did the same thing around the whole binding around the neck so what I ended up doing in order to fix this is I have a block it's a plastic block this is not flexible whatsoever wrap some 220 grit sandpaper on it and I used the edge over here and stuck it right on top of the painted area there is a lip over here and went back and forth cleaning the wood and creating a nice sharp lip over here bad thing with some of this binding though is it took some of the paint off with it so I'm going to have to kind of rework the back of the neck a little bit now it's not a big deal because this neck is kind of wavy and I don't know why like especially over here there's a nice wave right here on this edge and uh, yeah I'm going to fix that so I end up emailing the owner and asking him if he wants a gloss or a uh, matte finished neck on this thing uh, I am going to fill these holes that are from the old tuners and get rid of those I know he wants to stick, in, uh, stick with a rustic um, not sure if it's a rustic look or if he's trying to stick with a relic look for this so what I'm going to end up doing is fixing all this probably fixing all this as well getting rid of some of these chips over here and just starting fresh with a fresh back of the neck the top of the headstock this area over here well obviously I'm going to leave that alone uh, but I am going to fix the back of this now for the new binding to match the old binding uh, this binding here has looks like maybe shellac or just discoloration from age I don't know but I do have some paint markers um, actually they are not uh, paint but they are um, uh, 
wood dye markers, all right? And what I'm gonna end up doing is trying to match the yellowing into the binding over here so it still has that rustic look. Now the top of it over here, where it comes up against the fretboard itself, uh, that will be radius blocked down so it fits there because the that's why I got my caliper out over here because I measured the old binding and to see what I need for the new binding and the new binding is a little bit taller and a little bit thicker so the reason why I'm going to have to rework and resand all this down is because I want to get that binding to be flush with the neck radius itself on the back of it not having a lip sticking upwards or a lip sticking inwards so I have to radius that and then I have to sand the radius back on the top which I don't need to use an aggressive sandpaper to do this I already have my radius and my fretboard all I want to do is to level the binding and to get rid of the lip on each side of the binding and the fretboard so that'll be nice and smooth kind of like the only piece that's left is this piece here that didn't uh, didn't ship off so that's what my next steps are going to be as soon as my mail carrier gets here with the materials I need to do this wow I don't know what's going on with our mail services but they are getting here later and later every single day it's like we used to be 10 o'clock 11 o'clock the latest for mail now it's like 7 almost 7 p.m. And it just showed up now. All right, so what do we got here? All right, so here is the wire for the zero fret. Let's see, what did they send you? Well, they send you a couple packages. So did I get the same ones, or did I get two different sizes here? All right, so you get three stainless steel fret wires, and these are the Super Jumbos. These are the 0 .085, 0 .0, or sorry, 0 .058. So these are the largest ones that I could find, which is fine. And they are radiused as well. All right. Binding wire, or... Yep. And my cutters. Wow, these are different. These are a lot different. I bought my cutters off of eBay because they were a lot cheaper than the stew mats. And now I know why. Come on, you damn it. Oh, yeah. Build quality is totally different. All right, so these will be used for just nipping the wire, and the yellow ones I have will be used, and here's the difference between the two of them. This is the crap I bought off of eBay. This is a Stumac, as you can see on here, and you can see there's a lot of difference between the two of them. I think that was it. So, we can start doing the binding on so this. So I ordered two. the binding material and cut it with a razor blade but not too deep because I don't want to cut the binding itself there you go. so it looks like I have enough here Go around the whole body of a guitar. Shit. Come on. I need 
is two two strips of this, which I'll take off of one. So one of these I will tape up, put aside. And there's is there a difference between sides? There is not. Actually, there is. One side here is a little bit on the curved side, and this side here is more flat. So what I want to do is kind of rough measure this because I want to end up trimming this down on each end. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this right here. See if my razor blade will cut through it real easily. Oh yeah. I want another piece the exact same length. Nope, it's just a little bit longer. All right, so we don't need that. And I got a mess over here to clean up. All right. So I'm gonna start off on this side. Put a little CA glue over here. And not too much because the reason why I went with this tip here is it is going to spread as soon as I put the glue on here. So I'm not going to put a lot. I want the beveled side out. I want to put this on right up against right up against there. give it a couple of seconds holding it and then next I'll end up putting some tape on it to keep it in place but I want it right up against the new by or the old binding this way there is not going to be any issues and she's locked on and just for added protection a little bit of tape As you see here, she's right up against, right up against the old binding. Not really too much of a gap there at all. Once I do my sanding over here, those two will blend into each other. So <clears throat> now that I got that in place, I'm going to bend this a little bit and start putting the glue down in a long stripe, strip, stripe, strip, 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 however you want to call it. underneath there the glue will spread so I'm not concerned about that I just don't want it to spread over the edge of the fretboard all right so now what I do is I'll keep this up against the line here If it leaks out this side, that's fine. This side's going to get sanded anyways. All right. Oh, she's nice. She's no gap over here whatsoever. She's down. Put my tape on there for extra support. If I can find the end of the tape. This one here is not as easy to find the end of like the other tape was. I think I found it. Yep. So I'm gonna lay off some pieces here, make it easier for me. Tape this down. Okay, 
and it stopped over there. Get my pick this up again. Get my glue. Get right up underneath there. Fretboard. Push that up against that little edge. Try not to get too much glue on my fingers. here put some more glue close to the end then I want to have a little bit of squeeze out at the corner over there so the two pieces bind together So I got binding on here. It's nice and flat, nice and straight. And add a little bit of glue to this edge right here. I'll end up sanding that down anyways, just to get in there. There you go. And I'll take a razor blade. Let's see if I can push that in there. Then square it off. All right, so you can see how much higher that is with this lip over here. And uh, that's done. So I'll let that set. Now a lot of squeeze out on the bottom, which this part here I don't mind if there's some squeeze out, is I just don't want the squeeze out to be on the fretboard itself. So once that sets, I can go ahead and start sanding the uh, top over here with the radius block so I can knock this down probably with some 400 grit sandpaper I'm cutting plastic so it's not a big deal and we get some tape ready to do the other side all right so I got a decent amount in that corner over there bevel side out first I'm gonna get up against the edge so Hold that for a few seconds. And put some tape on it. And again, over here was a pretty good gap, and now it isn't too bad at all. Just the lip over here from the new binding. So I will fold this up a little bit. Get 
Come on, cooperate here, please. Thank you. Some glue underneath here. Once it starts coming out. this thing right up against that edge and tape it. All right, I like it. I'll let this set up. Got nothing on the fretboard. Let that set up and then peel the tape off and see what I got. As long as it doesn't peel the binding off with it, we should be good. Well, 20 minutes should be enough time, right? I think so. So let's see what happens here. Peel this tape off. Now what I used is I used the thick CA glue. So it didn't spread out like water, but it did spread when I put pressure on it from either tape or squeezing as I was applying. I'm going to go in next step with some CA glue, but I'm going to use the thin set. That's just going to guarantee me a lock with this. But I need to remove this tape because this tape is in my way. in order to do this. Yeah, that's on there. That shit ain't coming off. Alright. Cuts pretty nice. So what I'm going to do next, like I said, I used the thick CA glue for behind the binding. And now I'm going to use the thin CA glue. Cut this down a little bit. tip on here. Push this down real good so it doesn't come off. And like I said, the reason why I went with the thick CA glue is because I didn't want the thin CA glue to spread all over the wood and soak into the wood and end up coming off this side leaving a mark. So what I want to do with this right now is I want to take the thin CA glue and I need to turn this a little bit here. So I can hold this on the angle that I need to hold it on. Yeah, that's better. Turn it a little bit more. And not make a mess. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, hold it. I'm going to take the thin CA glue and I'm going to go right down this gap. And the thin CA glue will seep inside of there. ensuring a much better lock. And I'll take my spray and get that to here really quick. So what that's going to do is that's going to go inside of the gap and fill in whatever the thicker CA glue didn't fill. And make a nice seal over here as well. This is going to sand off 
no problems. So on this side, same thing. I'm not using a lot, I'm just running a bead. Let that set up a little bit. have it and go ahead and knock the lip down over here all right so what's left to do now I got the fretboard polished with some 1500 grit sandpaper what's left to do now is to sand the edges over here to get rid of this lip from the thickness of the binding and then put my fret markers inside here which I do have fret marker material sand these corners down over here sand this corners down over here to get them nice and square with everything and paint the back of the neck put a little clear give it a matte finish and then put the frets in afterwards.